Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Welcome back to another Hack the Box business CTF video walkthrough and write-up. In the last video in the series, we were taking a look at the Discord VM challenge from the miscellaneous category. And in this video, we're going to hop over to the web category and see what damage we can do there. So I'll get started over here. I have the web category pulled up and their after event, kind of, you know, after the game infrastructure we can use for write-ups and all that. So this challenge is called Time. And we have the challenge prompt here. We can click on the button. It says, get the current date and time, anytime, anywhere. This challenge is started on demand, so we can go ahead and fire this up. I will let this roll. There we go. It started, and now I have that IP address and port that I can go ahead and paste over here. Uh, I do have a couple other machine challenges, sublime text uh, terminal things open, and I'll clean it up so it looks like this was fresh, even though it obviously was not. Uh, this challenge says, hey, what's the time? And it prompts us, gives us the current time that uh, if I were to refresh the page, I'm hitting Control shift r on my keyboard for a hard refresh. It just displays the current time as we load this page. Not all that interesting. I could uh, right-click the page and uh, view page source or hit Control u on my keyboard, and that will bring up the HTML that is used to build this web page. It looks like there are a couple of imports or other things that are linked whether it is a CSS style or a cascading style sheet, write an image, etc. I don't know if there's any JavaScript we pull in. Yes, there is. These all seem to come from third party or external websites, though, other than an image file and a static CSS. Uh, that really won't all be all that interesting because it's all static, right? Not dynamic, interactive, worthwhile code for us to review because we want to see where could we really put an in input. And I notice this one here in the nav bar, it says, hey, what's the time? And there is a link, this href here in the HTML, looks like it brings us to a question mark, format equals percent %h, percent %m, percent %s. Now that, you can see it down here just as well. The question mark obviously refers to an HTTP parameter for a get request when you regularly kind of access a web page. Format would be the variable name and it's being set to percent %h, percent %m, percent %s. Now some of you might already notice and see that percent %h, percent %m, percent %s is part of a string format specifier that is typically used for showcasing the time or the date, right? And you can see it kind of up here just as well, percent %y, percent %m, percent %d. I think you'll oftentimes see this in the strf time function. Again, kind of as an example, you see that all the time in libraries, but certainly in the Python time library, if you're kind of more of a Python Easter. <laughs> Pythonista, like me. So with that in mind, it doesn't exactly give us a whole lot to take advantage of or to like exploit and, you know, abuse for this service. So there's got to be something else kind of weird going on here. Uh, now that we've looked at the application, though, we can take note, this challenge did actually include a downloadable source. It says this challenge has a downloadable part here in the description, so we can go ahead and download that. Now that I've got that downloaded, I'll go ahead and fire up my terminal, and I will hop into that Hack the Box Business CTF that's in the web category. It's in the time challenge. I'll make another directory for YouTube, as that's what we're working in here, and uh, we'll get over to YouTube now to download and move the downloads web time zip right there. You can see I kind of already had that in the directory, but I'm just going through the motions as we would uh, for real. Now with all of that download, it looks like we have the full kind of package source code for this application. So I can move into that directory, take a look at all this stuff. Looks like it has a Docker file and the flag, except this flag is just a placeholder flag, right? Just kind of for local development, not the real flag. We need it on the actual target, the remote service. But this Docker file tells us a little bit more as to how the instance and the deployable target is spun up. So we could actually take a look at what that Docker file entails to see, hey, does this explain where they put the flag in the remote target system? I just changed the uh, kind of syntax highlighting. I hit Control Shift P on my keyboard and then typed in bash to set the syntax to bash. So that seems to look pretty good in uh, Docker files for me. So it looks like we have a user, we install things that we need, we add repositories, we add PHP, configuration files that are included, etc. blah, blah, blah. What we're interested in is where the flag might be on the file system. We can see that, okay, it's copied in from the local on the host location, flag in the current directory, and then put inside the Docker container on the remote file system uh, in, the root of the in the root of the file system slash flag. So that's good to know where the flag is, but 
I still kind of want to know what this application is really made up or, or how it really works. So that is in the challenge directory here. And I can see a couple interesting folders. We have views, we have models, we have controllers, of course, assets and static for maybe the image or the CSS file that we would have seen previously. I can in fact run the tree command and I actually cannot run the tree command. That's embarrassing. It's okay. I don't really care if I'm wrong publicly. I can't see my keyboard because the microphone's in the way. I like to use T just to uh, a tree, just as kind of a visual representation of kind of what we're looking at. It gives us a quick snapshot as to uh, everything working in this challenge. So let me clear the screen and again, run tree. Might have to zoom out a bit so we can see it all, but those are all the files that we're gonna be looking at here. Again, CSS image, not all that interesting, but those other folders and files, those are gonna be much more interesting. If you see that kind of convention of using models, views and controllers, that is, an MVC application or a model view controller application. You see these a lot kind of in web frameworks. I am not gonna pretend that I know everything about them because I am not a software architect. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a software engineer. I don't develop stuff like this, but normally views are the front facing like actual visible, hence view as to what the user might really see when they're presented with this application. That's why we can see all of this PHP code, not even PHP, despite it being named .php, it's all kind of flat HTML and basically identical to what we saw already when we hit view source. In fact, it is identical when we hit control U on that web page. So that's not really all that helpful, but that is logically controlled given the application kind of showing you this view. What it might end up filling into this view is controlled by controllers, right? from the logic level. So if I were to go ahead and sub all the controllers, timecontroller.php, that was the only one present when we saw in our tree output, that tells us how this page really works. And it actually lets us know, oh, that format variable that we saw being passed as a get variable, if it's defined, then it'll use that value. Otherwise, it'll just have this default value, but that is set to this format variable here. Now that's gonna be passed in to a time model, which probably would kind of correlate to the model directory that we saw. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but that's passed in as a new object for the time variable, and that would be included in the view here. So maybe we did see that actually worthwhile when we're checking out the time, maybe that's referenced in the views here. Can I look for time repeatedly? Yeah, okay, so we can see just slightly off to the side some clever PHP syntax, maybe not all that visible, but it's just gonna end up placing in that variable for the actual current time. Okay, now we're curious what that time model really looks like. So walking through this, I know this is kind of, you know, kind of beating this to death, but I think it's good to work, walk through all the motions here. The time model is a class or an object and a model in a model view controller or an MVC application is kind of more of the like database representation or the object structure when you're looking at the blueprint for the things you might use in your application. So we have a constructor defined with a public function construct passed in the format, which we knew to be the variable over here. And what it would do is it would create a command for this object it actually just concatenates and places in the format that's passed in from our get variable into a string here that looks like a command that you would literally run on the command line, right? You can see the date kind of command with a format being supplied and two being standard error, the standard error stream on the command line in Linux redirected to ampersand one, standard output. Eh. So that's just kind of sending all of the output into one specific location, both errors and regular normal output. So this get time function looks like we saw being called over in the controller here. That will actually execute that command or exec. Now that means execute on the command line. That means literally run a, a shell system command. Uh, that is our glaring vulnerability now, right? Because we have the extreme potential for command injection based off of an argument that we can control arbitrarily. There's no validation or sanitization being used in here and it's going to execute it. Uh, needless to say, that's bad and that's where the vulnerability comes in. So we could take advantage of this. Uh, we simply need to sort of break out of the string. You can see a substring being represented inside of the double quotes here. Uh, the single quote represents maybe the format container or the, the format string literally represented as a string with a single quote. If we were to supply a single quote, we would 
break out and sort of have a new command being ran. But the question is, or the lingering portion is that we still have kind of this trailing end here, the suffix of redirecting the output. If you want to completely ignore that, we could just maybe comment that out with the octothorpe, right? So then we need to run a new command. You could typically add a little junction here with a semicolon to denote a new command or reference it with like an ampersand ampersand to run a, another command sequentially. So we could do things like check the ID of the user or run who am I or literally delete everything uh, or run a fork bomb if you really want. It doesn't matter. Uh, in our case, we want to cat the flag. So literally our command to win or our format string to get this flag is just this as a payload. Uh, let's try and run that, right? We'll go do that over in the application. I will uh, try it from the URL here in the web browser. That variable name should be format. And if we were to slap this in, that kind of just removes the date and really isn't all that helpful. So that gets in the way. Uh, that's just going to be annoying because of like the URL encoding and the single quotes and the special characters like this ampersand that we might need to use. Maybe that's, or excuse me, the octothorpe, the hashtag pound symbol. That's going to be treated like an anchor uh, in HTML or in web pages and not really going to work for us. We could maybe try this thing in, in curl. Like here, uh, I'll try and curl with that kind of in the clipboard already. Let's grab format right here. And let's try to just run that. There we go. The response is it's, and then a period. So that didn't execute either for us. Again, probably because we're going to end up running into all of these issues with URL encoding or maybe the, the comment commenting out the rest of our command from the actual command line. That's a pain. That's a nuisance. So uh, really what I recommend you do is just do this in Python. <laughs> you know me, of course, that is the solution always. I'm just kidding. Uh, but for real, we know we have the URL that we want to use here. Um, format will be the variable, but we're going to end up using the requests library or module in Python so that we could simply like return uh, a get request to that URL with the parameters or the get variables that we might supply. We offer that as a dictionary in Python requests. We can say that format can equal just a string of the string that we know we want to supply. Uh, I could again just use who am I and we'll, we'll use a semicolon or those two ampersands to be able to add another command here. Stacking on top of kind of what it's trying to use the date command. We need to break out of that date command after we've broken out of the string. So when we do that, let's try and print out the text from that request. Uh, I'll run this in sublime text and scroll through it. You should be able to see it is dub dub dub. Uh, just off of the side here. That's thankfully before the period, so we know, okay, it actually did have some output there. If we wanted to, we could run ID, and that might be much more visible. But that is the command injection that we're taking advantage of here. Let's go ahead and get the flag now. Let's cat out flag, and there we go. HTB time talks, and it says it's time to pwn. Uh, if you wanted to make this super duper clean, you totally could. You could import re and then do like a re dot search of a raw string with an r prefix HTB uh, curly braces, just about anything that we're looking for within r dot text. And actually, let's just make a good test for that. We can say if m print m group, uh, and then you could add like an else just so we have nice output, be like, hey, we failed to find the flag. Ta-da! And groups, I think, will return a actual mess. Or what do I have wrong in there? No, 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 yeah, yeah. Groups would have returned like a tuple or a list, but I just wanted the actual response. There we go. There's our flag. There's our get flag script, and that is literally that challenge. It's a simple command injection that I'm sure a lot of you probably saw right away. What the heck? No module name request? Python 3 that. There you go. <laughs> what are you trying to run it in? Python 2 over there? You stinking old deprecated language? Um, 
that's that challenge. Super easy, kind of once you see it, you need to totally look at the source code to be able to find this. Trying to fuzz that might be a pain, but uh, that's that. And I hope the absolutely slow paced me dragging you through it to explain everything was still worthwhile and a good learning exercise. That's it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I know this was uh, quite a doozy. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to have a lot more. We have a lot of other really great web challenges to get through. Uh, the note QL one is super good. Let's go ahead and submit that flag, by the way, while we're over here. Uh, Emergency is also very good, and uh, Lara Blog is also great. So I'm super excited to bring these all to you. We're going to have a lot of fun in the later coming videos. But thanks so much for watching. Please do those YouTube algorithm things. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.